There is a second version of this called an assumption. An assumption. I can assume your rights and responsibilities. Now, if I miss a payment, who is the bank coming after? Me, because they know. So the biggest difference, let's cut to the chase on this. The biggest difference between a subject to and an assumption is does the bank know? Typically in a subject to, like in Cameron's example, the bank does not know that you quit claimed me your interest, so they still see you on the note. On an assumption, Shauna, you and I literally would sit down together and call your bank and go, hey, I want to assume Shauna's rights and responsibilities Erase her name and write my name in. Now the bank goes, okay. And when I miss a payment, they come after me. All right? Because they let me assume your rights and your responsibilities. Also, when I assume, I also get all of the payment credit that you've already made. Hey, you lived in it for six months and you made payments on time. You earned some equity. That's now mine as the assumption because I assumed rights and the responsibilities. Are we cool? Thumbs up. All right. Now, before you start getting any wild thoughts, let me tell you about the next thing on this page because here's what's really going to happen. Imagine, if you will, for a second, I want to borrow your car. So I show you my driver's license. I show you my driving record. I show you proof of insurance. And you say, sure, Raymond, I'll loan you the car. Tomorrow, you're standing on the street corner and you see your car go by being driven by my brother because I let him subject to or assume the car. What are you guys going to do? Who's your first phone call going to be? Me. What the hell are you doing, dude? I did not qualify that guy. I qualified you. And since you have given up the asset, you have alienated yourself from the asset. Remember we talked about voluntary alienation and involuntary? The lender says, if you have alienated yourself from the asset, i.e., Donna, you quit claim to me the property, we are going to activate the due on sale clause. We want our money back. You're going to call me and go, Raymond, I didn't qualify your brother to drive it. I want my car back. Bring me my car back. It's the same concept. So if I talked you into buying your house subject to, and you quit claim to me the interest, and I start making your house payments, and all of a sudden I fail to make your house payment, they are going to come after you. But then you're going to go, but I, I, I don't own it anymore. I quit claimed it to Raymond. They're going to go, oh, well, in that case, we want our money now because you no longer have control, i.e. you have alienated yourself from the asset. You must either have money because you sold it or you gave it away. And in either case, you mm -hmm. no longer own it. We want our loan back. You sold the damn collateral. We no longer have the collateral, so we want our money. Got it? That's the alienation clause. You have alienated yourself 
and therefore we want our money back. Oh, I got a question. So that you never told the bank that you have this property. You stop making payments. The bank goes after me and say, we want our money. I now uh, pay it off and you're free and clear. Hey, thank you very much. That was awful nice of you. <laughs> yeah, you could do that. Why you want to do that, I don't know. Maybe you're ultimately a billionaire and you're just being nice to Raymond. But, but you're, if I mean, you had the ability to pay it off, you probably would have just paid it off on yourself and kept the home for yourself, right? Right, but how would that work then? Because I'm telling the bank, like, I don't own the property. I quit claim it to Raymond. Raymond has it. You go get the money for Raymond. But then and you are having to say, be no, pay. you signed the IOU. We're foreclosing on the IOU. Okay, now, we're foreclosing on the IOU. Yeah. Because you, now that's up to you how you're going to either repay us or go get the collateral back. We don't care. All right. We loaned you a hundred grand. We want our 95,000 you owe me. Now you got to come to me and go, hey, Raymond, we got a problem. You missed a couple payments. The bank's going to foreclose upon me, i.e. you. Right. We need to sell the house so we can both move on. Otherwise, if it goes to foreclosure on me, i.e. you, mm -hmm. they're going to end up taking the collateral even if I own it. Okay. So I'm going to lose the house too. Too, okay. So everybody loses. I was wondering. Yeah, everybody loses. And once again, I go back to that. Nothing in that mortgage hurts you if you continue to make the payments. If I continue to make the payments for the next 30 years under your name, literally the bank probably would never even know it. All they know is, hey, we got paid on that property. There's a check, put it in the bank. Everything's good. Now, here's the bad thing for me. Guess whose credit I've been building this whole time? Ma, thank you. <laughs> because the bank still thinks it's you. So right. you actually get the benefit too. Okay. If there is such a thing, you would get the benefit of that because I'm making the payments, but they don't know it's me. They still think it's you. And all of a sudden, LaShawn has now made 30 years at $550. Yay. We'll release the lien to her. Now, I, I own the property free and clear, but you got all the good credit because I made the payments. Hmm. So there is some good things to that. And typically, as long as I'm making the payments, most banks usually will never catch on because you're one person in their 100,000 loans they've made. It's only when you become a problem child does the bank notice you. And you become that problem child when you go into default. I've missed a couple payments. The bank thinks, well, LaShawn is a problem child. Let's get a hold of her. And you go, it's not me, it's Raymond. Well, we don't really care. You haven't made the payment on the loan. You signed as the liability. We're going after you for the note. All right? Now, on page 218, they actually can record the deed. And we do that because we want to show that transfer. And we have discussed the priority already. First one in gets first priority. They go by date. They get paid off by priority. All right. First priority gets paid first. Second priority gets paid second. First and second priority are based upon the date they got entered. The oldest one is first, then the next one becomes second. Did we talk about subordination between the two loans? We did, didn't we? Where second moves into first because they switch, and we did the whole theory of 
I'm standing in line for the movie theater and someone comes in behind me and we switch spots. So subordination allows a first and a second to switch places. It also allows for a second or third in theory. They have to be adjacent properties to subordinate. It's probably a better place to study, Aaron, on that table. I had to look, charge my phone. I was about to lose you. Look, it looked like a closet you were in, but you're cool now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So on page 218, we are going to talk about some different kinds of loans. Now, in the live class, when I teach this live, typically here's where I break for the day because we still have about two hours in this chapter. And I really don't want to cram it all in so fast that you don't get it or force you to stay over. So this is a logical break in this chapter right now. What we will do tomorrow is pick up right here on page 218 under types of loans and finish 13 as well, all right? Otherwise, there is a lot of information that I just gave you and I'm going to give you about another hour and a half and I do not want to inundate you all at one time. So at this point, I am going to say we are done with today's lecture and we will pick it up tomorrow right there on the types of loans. All right. Any questions about this portion so far? There is a lot of information that you should go back and reread up until that on page 218 where it says types of loans. Uh, and then tomorrow or the next class, we will pick up right here where we left off. All right. Are we good? Thumbs up. All right. Just one second here. <laughs>